One time I had some trouble with my plumbing in my house. The whole basement was flooded. There was sewage. It was horrible. I couldn't live there. I called the plumber up and he came and he took a look at it and he said, uh, oh, I could fix it. It'll take about seven days. And I said, oh, no. Uh, and he said, oh, it'll cost you 10 grand. If you give me eight grand up front and then two grand when I'm finished I'll have it all fixed up for you and I thought well I have no choice I might as well get it done so I booked a motel went and stayed in a motel for seven days and uh, the plumber worked on it and he worked on it for six days and then he left and it was almost finished, but it wasn't, I couldn't live in the house yet. It wasn't, no water was turned on, there was nothing, it wasn't ready. So, I'm looking all over, I can't find the plumber anywhere. I'm calling him, he's avoiding my calls. I, I you know, I don't know what to do for, for months. I'm trying to find this guy. And I'm still staying in the motel, I can't live in my house. I finally find him, and he says, oh, oh, yeah, 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 I'll get it done for you. So he came back, and he worked on it for one day, and he was finished. And I got to move back into my house. And he says, well, okay, now you owe me another 2000 And I said, well, wait a minute. You said it was only going to take seven days. You took months. He says, no, I didn't. I worked on it for six days, and then I worked on it for one day. That's seven days. Now, do you think that God works that way? I don't think God works that way. That, that just doesn't sound right at all to me. Um, so we're going to talk now about the 70 weeks prophecy of Daniel chapter 9. And uh, I guess the, the plumber story relates to uh, what a lot of people would call the gap theory. That 69 weeks are, are fulfilled and there's a long gap, unknown period of time where the last week will be fulfilled at the end of time where the Antichrist will come. Um, I have a lot of problems with that teaching. Um, I, I'll show you what I believe to be the right teaching on this uh, particular chapter and I'll let you decide for yourself. Okay. Okay, this is the blue letter Bible that I showed you earlier. We'll go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 9. Okay. In the first year of Darius, son of Ahusuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. So this is when Darius uh, conquered Babylon. In the first year of his reign, I, da Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So Daniel is reading the book of Jeremiah and this is what he's looking at. So this here is the sword project that uh, I showed you before. Uh, program that I use sometimes. It's 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 a uh, really good for quick searches in the Bible, and also for comparing different uh, versions. Is it in the time? No, it's not in the Tyndale. Um, is it in the Wycliffe? Probably not. Oh, it's in the Wycliffe. Anyway. King James Version, we'll see here, 
Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 11 and this this is Jeremiah who was a prophet during the destruction of Jerusalem up to leading up to it and during it and um, he was saying and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years and it shall come to pass when the 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation says the Lord for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolations and I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it even all that is written in this book so Daniel's reading this and he's saying okay so I'm in Babylon and the Darius has just uh, taken Babylon and, and uh, taken it from the Babylonians and the Persians have, um, I guess there was a lot of war in Babylon and, and, it, and that land was being desolated at that time also. And the, the city of Babylon was taken by the Persians, and Daniel was in the city at that time. So back to Daniel. So Daniel, he's reading. See, this, the Blue Letter Bible is good because with any verse, I can click on here and go right into the Hebrew and look at it. So... So Daniel's reading Jeremiah, and he's saying, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned, and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and from your judgments. Um, so here you notice Daniel is not saying they sinned. He's saying we sinned against you. So he's including himself in the nation of Israel. And neither have we hearkened unto your servants, the prophets, which spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us confusion of face, as at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel that are near, and that are far off, through all the countries, whether you have driven them, because of their trespass, that they trespassed against you. O Lord, to us belongs confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord God belongs mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed your law, even by departing, that they might not obey the voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. So what is this oath in the law of Moses? It's uh, You'll find it in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28 um, and in many other parts of Deuteronomy but mainly there you'll find all the curses uh, that would that God said would come upon them if they did not keep his laws and they had many 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 chances and many times they repented many times God uh, gave them another chance but it got to a point where they were out of chances and in 586 BC uh, the um, 
king of Babylon came and destroyed the city of Jerusalem and the temple and the people were taken into captivity so that's how Daniel came to be in Babylon and now he's in the city of Babylon when the Persians take the city okay so then he goes on and he says and he has confirmed his words which he spoke against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven has not been done as had as has been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand your truth. Therefore has the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he does, for we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned, as, this, as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let your anger and your fury be turned away from the city Jerusalem, from your holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O Lord God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications, and cause your face to shine upon your sanctuary that is desolate. So this is an important part. Uh, most people skip this whole prayer when they start studying the 70 weeks of Daniel. But it's very important. This is what he's praying about. And the sanctuary is desolated. That's an important statement right there. But we will read about that later. The sanctuary is desolated. It's destroyed. It's, it's taken right down to the ground. Okay? Now, O oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before you for our righteousness, but for your great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for your own sake. O my God, for the city and for the people that are called by your name. So he's saying, don't do it for us, but do it for you, because you don't deserve to have this reproach on your name. So then... Here comes the, uh, the angel. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, while I was, so he's praying for the holy mountain. That's Jerusalem and the temple. He's praying for the Jerusalem and the temple. While I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Okay. So, Daniel, um, I guess he can't actually do sacrifices because there's no temple and he's not a Levite priest. But he's uh, praying during the times when they would be doing that. Okay, that's what I'm assuming anyway. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh Daniel, I am now come forth to give you skill and understanding okay he's gonna give Daniel skill and understanding 
At the beginning of your supplications, the commandment came forth, and I, have, and I am here to show you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Okay, now here's the matter and the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. So there's a statement right there. Seventy weeks are determined. Determined for what? Determined. Seventy week period has been declared. Okay? And what are the things, okay? You got a pen and paper? Write this down. There's a list. Okay? It's a determined upon your people and your holy city. Your people and your holy city. He's talking to Daniel. Okay? Your people, Israel or the Jews, and your holy city. Okay, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to end sin, and to make reconciliation for iniquity. That's for breaking the law. Okay, and bring in everlasting righteousness. That's interesting. To bring in everlasting righteousness. That's a righteousness that will never end. And to seal up the vision and prophecy. To seal up. So to bring to us to an end prophecy. Or to put a seal upon it. It's written. It's written. So with a scroll, they would write a scroll or write a message. And then the king would put a wax seal on it and press his ring into it. So that's his seal. So then that message is taken by a messenger. And then this, when the seal is broken, the, the king, whoever he sent the message to would break the seal and say, Okay, nobody has opened this until I got it. That's what the seal means. And then he would open the seal. So in pro in Revelation we see we see Jesus or the Lamb opening the seven seals on the scroll. So that's it's the same thing. So he's putting the seal on prophecy. Okay. To seal up prophecy. And then, to anoint the Most Holy. That's the Day of Atonement in the um, Jewish uh, Mosaic festivals. The, the Day of Atonement is the day they anoint the Most Holy. It's like um, all the sins of the people are placed upon the one animal, and the animal is sacri sacrificed. So it's a... It's a, a uh, the atoning for the sins of the people for the whole year and it was done every year and it's an annual thing so this is for the city and for the transgression of the city 70 weeks are determined to bring an atonement for the city that's been destroyed and to end sin and bring in everlasting righteousness so now, we understand today the 70 weeks 
is actually 77s, uh, which is 490 years. So each day is a year in these weeks. So it's 70 times 7 is 490. Okay? So know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem to Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So seven and sixty and two, which would be sixty-nine. So 69 weeks until, okay, from the going of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem to the Messiah shall be 69 weeks, okay? 69 times 7, that is a 483 years. So from the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem to the Messiah is 483 years, okay? So when is that? Let's just take a quick look at when that is. And when that is in, there's a lot of different uh, teachings on this, but my, my opinion is that that is talking about Ezra. Let's go back to the sword here. We'll take a look at book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 2 I think oh it's right here chapter 1 the first year of Cyrus king of Persia that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled okay so this is it the, the word of the Lord by Jeremiah might be fulfilled. This is the end of the 70 years. Okay, The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, and he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him and let him go to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And whoever remains in any place where he sojourns, let the men of his place help him with silver, gold, and goods, and beasts, besides the free will offering for the house of God, then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all of them and um, go to Jerusalem and build the city. Okay, But see what happened was that this uh, edict was given and then there was a hold put on it because uh, people who were there petitioned the king back saying these people should not be building this city and they had to uh, go through some red tape in order to uh, go forward with building the city and so um, it, go, it went on a little bit and the date that, that we have for um, the actual going forth of the commandment to build Jerusalem is in 458 BC. 458 BC. So now, if you take 458 BC, okay, minus the 69 weeks, okay, that would be 483. Okay, so you go 483 
That's a 69 weeks minus 458 BC. That equals 25 AD. So what happens in 25 AD? That's where we go to Luke. Luke chapter 3. In the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, blah, blah, blah. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He came to all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance of sins. Okay, so John the Baptist comes preaching baptism and talking about the one who is coming after him. So now this is an anointing. Baptism is an anointing. Um, in, in ancient Israel, they would anoint with oil, olive oil, and they would pour oil over the person's head. And this is how a priest was anointed to be a priest or a king was anointed to be a king. But this here is the anointing of the Messiah. This is a new thing and it's by using water. So the idea here is that water is everywhere on the earth. Water is a cleansing agent as a part of nature itself. And that this pouring pouring forth of God's mercy and goodness upon the earth by giving the Messiah is that the anointing is water. It's everywhere. Everything is being anointed. And so and those who accept this anointing are part of the anointing. So this is what uh, John the Baptist was teaching. And Jesus Christ came, and the Son of God, and be, and came and was anointed by, by John the Baptist. Okay, and then they said, okay, then came Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of you. And come you to me? And Jesus said to him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it become us to fulfill all righteousness. So he's, we're fulfilling something here. All righteousness. Okay? So this, this is, uh, this 69 weeks is leading to the baptism of Jesus, the anointing of the Messiah, right? So what's going on with the anointing of the Messiah? To make an end of sin, to make a reconciliation, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up vision and prophecy. Because every prophecy and every vision now must be filtered through the parables of Jesus and the teachings of the apostles and say this is the this is the lens that you're going to use to look at the prophets okay so that's the sealing up of the vision and the prophets and to anoint the most holy so know therefore and, go, and understand from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah shall be the, the 69 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. So the, during the 69 weeks the city will, build, will be built again in troublous times and it was um, the whole story of from that time the second temple period was uh, constantly troublous times they were uh, um, embroiled in the midst of other people's wars 
in the midst of their own wars and and it was all rebuilt in those kinds of times okay and after 62 weeks the Messiah shall be cut off but not for himself and the people of the Prince so after the 69 weeks there's seven weeks and then 62 weeks right so after that the 69 weeks is over the Messiah shall be cut off but not for himself so that's Jesus still right he's cut off from the land of the living but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Well, that's the Romans. They came and destroyed the city and the sanctuary, the temple. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. So the end thereof... Um, the end of the destroying of the city and the sanctuary shall be with a flood. So what kind of flood? What's the, what does that mean? And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. So this is going to be very troublesome times after the destruction of the sanctuary. And it's going to be a flood. It's going to be flooded by these desolations okay these troubles so what are these de desolations and troubles okay so the last verse he's going to talk more about what all that is okay so here it is the 70th week okay and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week who who shall the, the Messiah. That's who he's talking about. Okay? The Messiah shall confirm the covenant. What covenant? The new covenant that Jeremiah speaks about. The new covenant of Christianity. He confirmed it for one week. So, um, Jesus preached the gospel from the time... He was uh, baptized by John until his crucifixion was three and a half years until he was crucified. And then three and a half years after he was crucified, the gospel went out to the Gentiles. So that is the week. That's the, la the final week was from the time Jesus was baptized until the time the Gentile, the nations, the Gentiles were baptized, okay? Or were, were given the right of baptism. So it went first to the Jews during that week and then to the Gentiles after that week was finished. It went to every nation. So how does it, now let's read it with that in mind, okay? He will confirm the covenant with many for one week, Jesus and his disciples. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause sacrifice and oblation to cease. In the midst of the week, that's when he was crucified, in the middle of the week, okay? After the three and a half years. And him being crucified caused the sacrifice in the temple to end. Remember when Jesus was crucified, the, the, the curtain in the temple was ripped right up the middle? Well, um, technically, they could no longer offer sacrifices. Um, the, the, um, that was brought to an end, technically. So whether they kept doing it or not, um, is irrelevant. It's 
spiritually and according to God's uh, doings, the sacrifice came to an end because Jesus is the sacrifice. He sacrificed himself. So according to Christianity, that is the end of the sacrifice, the sacrifice in the temple. Okay? So in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice to cease. And so that's one thing he did. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. That's until the end, until the final judgment day. It's desolate. Okay? And the overspreading of abominations. Um, what is the overspreading of abom what is an abomination, first of all? An abomination is an idol, a false god, uh, false teachings. These are all abominations. So um, the overspreading of the whole world of God's word, of, of God's teaching, everything's overspread with abominations. Okay, all the abominations are the um, during that time are the Greco Greco Roman mythology and Babylonian mythology, Egyptian mythology. These are the abominations, the false gods and goddesses that all the world is following after. So these things, in a way, ended, but didn't really end. Because these things, in a way, absorbed Christianity in the Roman Empire, that uh, these ideas didn't end. They just took on Christian names. So if you're looking at uh, things like Mary and Joseph and all the saints and blah, blah, blah. Let's take a look at something here, okay? Okay, and take a look at this, okay? Catholic Online. Catholic Online. Okay, saints, A to Z. Here we go. How many saints are there? And each one has a job, okay? Uh, what do they, you know, what's this one in charge of? I never even heard of these ones. What are they in charge of? Uh, the worker holy card. The worker. Uh, you can shop. You can buy something for this, right? You know, you can go shopping for saints. All right. Um, uh, there's a lighter prayer candle. Okay, let's light a prayer candle. Um, you know, this is, if, if you study the Hebrew scriptures, not God's ways. This is pagan. This is paganism. Okay. And, you know, it's easy to pick on the Catholics because it's the most, um, maybe perhaps the most prevalent here because it comes right from Roman times. The Eastern Orthodox also comes right from Roman times. And so the Romans, you know, they, that was their culture, okay? This was their culture, and they just Christianized it. Okay, so here's all all this. Um, it's not according to the Hebrew teachings. It's not according to the teaching of the apostles. This is according to Greco-Roman mythology. Okay, and it sort of skewed it a bit, but this is what I think it means by the overflooding of abominations until the consummation is that not only this but even Protestants today um, are oh, 
buying into this um, uh, ecumenical movement of bringing all the churches together, um, you know, to sing Kumbaya together. How about this, okay? Ecumenical stuff. Ecumenical and Interfaith Relations Committee, Presbyterian Church of Canada, okay? It's not only in Canada, it's, it's all over the world. But uh, here they are, you know, um, the importance of our ecumenical and interfaith work and partnerships, okay? So there's an interfaith work going on to bring all the faiths together, you know, no matter what they believe, we all can come together, we'll all sing Kumbaya, orthodoxcouncil.org, okay, the ecumenical patriarchate, okay, message of the holy and great council, okay. And cynical of the holy and great council. Um, so, you know, this is a part of it also. You know, they're, they're coming together, but they're not coming together very quickly because they have grievances with each other. That, uh, the main grievance is who's the boss. You know, Rome insists on being the boss. And um, as, you know, the, we know from history, the Orthodox don't like that idea. And frankly, no, no, neither does anybody else who is not Roman Catholic. So, you know, this is eventually going to come together. But this is the overspreading of abominations. It's, it's, um, it's an overspreading of false teaching that are not Christian or Jewish. They're something else. Okay? So, he will cause sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. He shall make the temple desolate. Okay? So, let's see. I'll show you something here. Search. Desolate. Because this brings me to, to mind of something that Jesus said. Okay. Right here. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which kills the prophets and stones them are sent to thee. How often I would have gathered your children together as a hen does gather her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you shall say as blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Okay? So he shall leave their house desolate. He shall make it desolate even until the consummation. What's the consummation? Well, I'm not so sure what that is. And that determined. So what is determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, so what's, uh, we can take a little closer look here into the Hebrew with this, with this particular verse, okay? And the consummation until the consummation, what is this consummation? Kala. Until the kala, it's a noun, right? What does it mean? Let's just go here, Strong's number. It gives you a little uh, quick uh, study here. Completion, termination, full end, complete destruction. 
completion, bringing something to an end, completing it, okay, until the consummation, okay, um, completely, altogether, almost always by God, okay, so it's used as God doing the completing. And here's all the places you'll find that that word used. And here it is in Jesenius. Completion, perfection, uh, consumption, destruction. And then here's a, some verses that's used. I will go now go down and see. This is talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. I will now, now go down and see whether they have done completely or altogether according to the cry of it. Or he shall surely thrust you out hence completely. So it's a completion. Okay, so that is uh, now we just go hit the back button, get back to Daniel. Okay, so that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Even he shall make it desolate until the completion. And that determined. What has been determined? Desolations have been determined. Shall be poured upon the desolate. Until the completion. So what's that all mean? That means in the in the there it is close that so that means that up until the end until the second coming of Jesus there will be this overspreading of abominations and desolations and that is what is determined and that will be poured upon, more and more upon the desolate. So this is the world we live in. And we are Christians. So we are not a part of the world, but we are in the world. Okay? And that's what that means. So there's my take on the 70-week prophecy. Now, why would they have this gap theory? and all this other stuff. This is Protestants. Because it's been all overrun long ago by the uh, Counter-Reformation. Protestants are not Protestants anymore. It's all been desolated. No matter what Christians build, it's going to be desolated. Because that is what has been determined. So that's just the way it is. So, you know, I find with um, understanding a lot of these prophecies, if you go back to the older, um, the older interpretations, maybe up until the 1800s or so, you'll find uh, that those interpretations are pretty close, except maybe, you know, they were during the time, um, those were different times where the people were a lot more superstitious and maybe a lot more radical. So you take it a bit with a grain of salt and you say, okay, well, they were on to something. Um, but then the counter-reformation came in and changed it into something completely different. So you got to go, go back to what they were on to and think about that and say, okay, what were they getting to here? What were they finding out before the Counter-Reformation came and changed it all? Because the gap theory and the, the pre-trib rapture and all this stuff, everybody's waiting for the Antichrist. That's completely opposite of who they should be waiting for.
Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, the New Testament says that he's already here. That he will be revealed. Not that he's going to come. Not that the, any, the, the man of sin isn't going to come. The man of sin is already here. He's going to be revealed. For what he actually is. So don't wait for a coming Antichrist. He's already here. He's been here all along. Wait for a coming Christ. All right, so um, I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.